Okay. Please ask the host to give you. Oh. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, January. I'm sorry. Yes, it is January 29th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. What's up? <laughs> oh, everything, all of us. Our uh, guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Boo uh, Joe, all the way from Kentucky. Hey. Hello. And John Richards from London, well, south of London, I believe, England. South Coast, yes. Sounds London's, good. London's that way, in the north, 50 miles. Ah, cool. Uh, that way doesn't work real well on the radio, but otherwise. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'm betting you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, and that's just one town. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And if you'll stick around till after the break, we'll tell you more about it then. Wombat, what's our topic today? Okay, and I'm saying this as input from the questions, but why don't Christians jump off a cliff? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then like, it's not a, it's in, and then it's more of a thoughtful answer of like, mm -hmm. hey, why don't they actually do that if the afterlife is better? But listen, we can get into it. We can get into it. Hey, what's up, Dr. Five? I see you. I see you. I was going to answer the question, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's excited. He's excited. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we're going to go into before we get too excited. Let's go into our weekly invocation, then check how everyone's doing, and then we can jump into the meats. All right, our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, Al Dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread. And forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. Hmm. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Raw. Raw. Man. Guys, it's been a really, really nice Saturday. First sunny weekend day in <clears throat> this whole month got it out of our system and now we're back to the doom and gloom of the uh the return of winter so we'll have probably two more snows where we're at right now uh dread you've been you know snow you've been born right. in snow snow is in your blood but for us it's like oh it'd be nice if we could have something other than overcast and ice falling out of the ground or that's why i sleep. need rum in my blood to keep the snow at bay <laughs> <laughs> and a freeze Right. So let's do a check in before we ask the question about why Christians don't they, why don't they just jump off a cliff and fall into the greater theme of today's questions, which is cognitive dissonance. Dread, how you been? I've been well, actually, uh, just in this last week, I've been uh, contacted by our, our prophet, Bobby Henderson. Nice. Um, and we're moving forward with the expressions of interest for a, a developer of a app for pastafarians and it's one of these things that you strictly opt in uh, anonymity but okay. uh, you can identify amongst other pastafarians like signal or, or and, telegram or something like that. and but, what is this app called please give me the good the best name ever well well I, i'm not the one that's going to come up with a name uh, myself uh, so that's still under consideration and it depends i guess on what's ultimate functionality is but uh, it'll have something to do with uh, like noodles or something is it pastafarians 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 <laughs> Pasta. i don't know <laughs> ah at least put it on the list at least put it on the list <laughs> Ujo, yeah that, that's oh, that's a little hard to get around the tongue there so i i'm sure we'll and come pastafarians up is i always thought okay all right all right that's fair that's fair that's fair <laughs> boudreau speaking of things to get hard across the lips how have you been my friend <laughs> Boudreaux, hard to spell too um <laughs> I've, I've been well I, i've been uh I, I moved my exercise schedule around to to be able to join today and uh, excited to be here and yeah nice. good to see you man fitness today. welcome orange fitness yep. yeah yeah okay 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 very very cool to have you uh let us know 
so you are a big movie buff. What's the the latest movie that you've actually gone to see? Uh, well, just last night I watched uh, You People. Um, nice. Which, which was really, really entertaining. Um, yeah, 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 I saw the ad for that. Yeah. Um, but oh, uh, I, we were going to go see Avatar in the theater and just got busy. So we, can, so we may still do that. Um, but other than that, I can't think of the last movie I saw. Yeah, here's oh, my thing. I, I just recently saw Suburbicon based on recommendations. Yeah, yeah, I, I told you guys about that. Same vein as you people, uh, but also it not because the, the 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 racial commentary tree is in the backdrop. It colors what is uh, much more, in my opinion, a really, really fascinating dark comedy in, in the foreground. And when I saw that movie, I was like, this is really good because it's it's taking for granted how people were back there by just saying, hey, everyone's racist. But bad stuff is going to happen. Don't worry, because more or less everyone is. It's just like, it was so good. And yeah. it never was like called out or pointed out as like a bad thing. It was just, it was what it is. But here's this other story that's in this world. And mm. so when I saw it, I thought, what a great depiction of it. Because, you know, it, it, it out so often things get so melodram melodramatic. And, and there's like has to be some cool thing where there's one white neighbor who's here to help out and all this stuff it's like no it's not about them it's about these terrible this terrible family and when i when i went to see the reviews what i was unfortunate to find out was like nobody got the joke or nobody like like that <laughs> right and, <laughs> right right and so there's nothing more frustrating than watching a good movie that you think is good and then finding out that nobody else liked that movie and i think that's how cult followings begin and so yes absolutely there's a whole realm of them. And and to believe it or not, Bujo has a whole wallpaper at Pantheon of like all of the cult movies were like Hangover. It came out, nobody liked it, but the people who liked it did like it and they supported it and they kept coming out with new ones and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that that's how you start religions. That's how you start cults. Great show wow. to talk about that. John Richards, <laughs> how have you been? Well, that sounds like Star Trek, which was a flop in the, in the beginning and then developed into a cult. Anyway, I didn't know that. Yeah. Anyway, um, I've been fine, mm. which is, you know, I, I like to wake up every morning. So far, it's successful. But I, I made a lovely AUK, Atheism UK podcast this morning because we have some issues going over here. And one of our friends has been deplatformed because he got an item onto the agenda of one of our local committees for religious education hmm. and uh, and it was about assemblies because a 1944 law in this country and bear in mind that we we're not a secular country constitutionally we are a church of england you know religious country which yeah. is hmm. ridiculous because of course you're all on the you're going you're on the downhill side like of Canada. Yeah, yeah. religious yeah, yeah. awakening. Yeah. Like Technically. Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This anachronistic law specifies right. that at school every pupil has to meet once a day, all of them together in a, an assembly and have a Christian religious worship. And of course, most of the schools ignore this, but nonetheless, it's on the statute book, and we're campaigning to get rid of it. Yeah, good. good for you. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Well, it was and just like in Canada. It was only in 1978 that blasphemy laws yeah. were taken off the books. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're right. I'd also like to, you know, in a non in a non religious sense, I'd also like to see pledge of allegiances just go away too. In yeah. America. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's no real need for that. You can't force somebody to make a pledge. It's, it's coercion. Right. They wouldn't stand up anyway. Exactly. Like let's let's think about what that actually means. Dr Doubter five. Since we Yo, hate America, how you been? We hate America. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I got a new graphics card so that I could play Star Citizen better. Nice. And it's working fine. And okay. I've got a, a new um in what do you call it? De devotee in dread. He's uh yeah. playing it yeah. now too. We've been oh, hanging really? out together awesome. with starships. Yeah, so you guys are like space engineers together then? Uh, more like combaters. Combat okay, okay, okay. Soldiers. Pilot yeah. makers. Pilots. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, a lot of fun. Cool. Man, that's awesome. So who would imagine when you were, were born, you'd be 
virtual simulated space pirate or a computer programmer because i was born in 1950 (laughs) yeah 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 think of this world what a great what a great all right we're going to go into some listener comments the aspect of today's show or general theme is uh cognitive dissonance and we talked about and discord uh what questions would you guys have for a group of atheists or for religious people and the first question that we had was why don't religious people just jump off a cliff pause 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 actually that's a really good point because they believe the afterlife is better than the life that we're in right now so why don't they jump off a cliff doubt or five I, you're excited so <laughs> let go for it go for it well it would make sense yes of course but the church found out pretty early on that that's not a good idea so they made it a sin okay yes. so, i mean yeah, they so would lose me. memberships and they wouldn't get their tithes anymore so they made it a sin so that if the last thing you did was com- commit suicide you'd go to hell so how about presumably you could help your friend by pushing them off the cliff yeah well that's the thing you don't (laughs) see them like just ignoring safety though i mean uh, you'd think that if they thought they were to live forever like profess like they profess to do yeah that they would you know shoot uh, safety belts uh looking both ways when they walk into traffic you know because what difference does it make wouldn't you rather reside in heaven than here on earth with all the pain? You know, right. but they don't do that, do they? They they seem to know better at some level. Well, help me out. My mom's a Jehovah Witness. She uh, doesn't accept blood transfusions, and right. that could actually go to save her life. Is that considered one of those loopholes where it's like, oh, I need a blood transfusion, and if I don't get one, I go to the afterlife, where mm-hmm. I'll party with God and Jesus forever? I don't yeah, have I don't an answer to that. I don't. I don't know why they would do that. Uh, mm. I, there's nothing in the Bible that I know. Of course, they could probably tell you why they don't, according to the, the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. But to me, it makes no sense. Yeah. Bujo, what's up? So I, I had to pull up the, the the book on my on my app, but but uh, why there is no God? Simple responses to twenty common arguments for the existence of God. It's by Armin Navabi. I don't know if anyone's ever read yeah, it. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I, I'm, if I recall, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, John, uh, the kind of the intro to the book was him. I think he's Muslim, and mm. he was talking about how he jumped off the roof of a building to try to commit suicide because he was so terrified of not getting into heaven. And that there is a loophole in um, in their religion that if you're under the age of 13 or whatever it was, 14, um, you'd automatically go to the, right. the good place. And uh, he didn't. He didn't die, uh, and recovered, and then you know um, found his way toward atheism and wrote an excellent book. But it, wow. it is to me that's that's frightening, and that well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's another thing. Uh, even <clears throat> in Christ, uh, mainstream Christianity in America, there's a there's a common belief that if you're below like seven years old, uh, that you automatically go to heaven. And Andrea Yates took that to the logical conclusion and killed five of her children in one afternoon. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're talking I mean, you about can, that. Yeah, you can go on Google and yeah. uh, look up Andrea Yates for the full story. Mm-hmm. That's it. And so, Catholics, of course, have a, an answer to unbaptized babies. You know, they go to the yeah. guff or whatever it's called. Limbo. Uh, some, Actually, that's being yeah. abolished. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I, Catholic I, I Church. Got, yeah. But they, they nevertheless had come up with something, right? right they did yeah yeah wow uh discord was talking about andrea yates as well uh they're bringing that up as a uh example of a woman who drowned all five of her children in a bathtub in the bathtub one after yeah mm-hmm. just to make sure that they would go to heaven yeah. just so they right. get through that loophole right in an evil mm-hmm. world um dread there's another comment oh it's actually to me jova witnesses don't accept uh blood because they they are told that humans must not sustain their life with another creature's blood which includes right. other people and that's uh-huh. why it's unholy i'd like to get the scriptural references on that if they're listening and would it matter some would of them matter? no i'd like to look it up and see what the actual wording is <laughs> okay okay and what's funny is uh, i was talking to a christian earlier this week on uh, facebook and i quoted a scripture to her and she said well you can't take it literally <laughs> <laughs> and that was pretty much into the conversation that's great that's I so mean, great john, i mean like john, i should i should not take god's unhearing word you know right for you know 
Oh, that's that should so go funny. to a human to interpret it. Yeah, it, we live in a weird zany twilight zone. It really is. John mm -hmm. Richards, why don't Christians just jump off a cliff? Well, Dred's right. They made it a sin. And mm. probably, or was that you, Larry? Uh, and probably yeah. because they, they don't want to reduce their congregation. They want to expand it. It's a business, right. after all. Right, it is. But, yeah. but what, what um, I think we should add to this conversation, the fact that heaven is actually a gay club in Charing Cross, <laughs> London. And uh, what? I, I've not been there. <laughs> I, a I, gay I, nightclub? Yes, yes, but I, I've not been there, but I, I think that it might not be so um, unreal as uh, they like to imagine. But the, the interesting thing here is what is and what isn't suicide? Because one of you raised the point that you could deny medication. And whilst you wouldn't actually be no, positive. Christian scientists. Yeah, while you wouldn't actually be positively killing yourself, you would be sort of negatively <laughs> killing yourself. So is that is that suicide or is that just, you know, allowing nature's way? Mm. Mm. Suicide by negligence. Yeah. yeah. What is yeah. It? suicide by negligence? OK, that's there must be a courtroom. <laughs> Smoking cigarettes, to... eating yeah. poorly. Yeah. Not exercising. Oh. Smoking cigarettes and the, uh, drinking uh, Captain well, Kangaroo. <laughs> I'd love to see the, the after it's work awesome. evening ABC special where it's just courtroom in heaven where they're just like, yeah, you're here, but did you kind of kill yourself? Did you conspire <laughs> to commit suicide? There's a thing here. <clears throat> no. yeah. And then when they go through the pearly gates. Well, it's it's uh, a very gray area now. You've raised all sorts of things like not taking enough exercise. Ooh. Yeah. So Discord is asking, do you guys think that like not wearing your safety belt or taking medicine, seatbelt? Mm -hmm. Seat belts, seat belts, seat belt. or taking medicine count as ways to increase your chances to go into heaven, and and why aren't those taken more often? And maybe that's why anti-vaxxing is so. I was going to say, I was going to say that, yeah, that uh, isn't anti-vaxxing is just like not wearing a seatbelt, and then isn't that passively uh, exposing yourself to yeah. uh, an early death, yeah. uh, which mm -hmm. by virtue of that would be suicide by negligence. Yeah. Let's go, Boudreaux. As the uh, resident uh, traffic engineer in, in, on the call, I have to step in and say we, we've actually demonstrated that people that don't wear their seatbelt um, actually uh, uh, incur a, a burden, a cost on society by. Yeah, of course, uh, for sure. Uh, it's the and, same thing with motorcycles and helmets. And helmets, yeah. yeah. And then, and then you could make the same argument with vaccines too. You know, uh, yes, uh, fewer people vaccinated. So that, so that one, that one's tricky. Uh, Wow, they're maybe they're they're trying to get more people into uh, uh, to to die prematurely. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, I was good. If I may add to Boudreaux's comment, Go for a it. part of that and anti vaxxing, uh, which is a real thing that you can see, is is how it overburdened the hospitals. Yeah, and yeah. that's what they were. That's what they were afraid of. And and of course, people who don't vax end up mm. in hospital. Mm -hmm. straining the system costing yep. everybody who needs Making more people sick yeah, and yeah. those who really need the the services don't get them because it's clogged up with That's all right. these uh, mm. other people yeah so here's an interesting thing because what well, if we're going down this suicide by neglig negligence route there's okay. there's a number of avenues isn't there i mean there's not eating well there's not taking enough exercise there's smoking there's drinking yep. excessively so on and so forth is it possible that there's a cumulative effect? <laughs> how many of these, <laughs> how many of these negligences adds up to one suicide? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah that's right. A good one. <laughs> Great comment. This should be Was charted this... on an Excel spreadsheet. Yes. True. Yes. True. <laughs> There's a really good follow-up comment that was just posted on Discord saying that Jesus Christ as a human sacrifice is in its own right an example of a suicide, where mm -hmm. he had multiple yeah. opportunities to say, hey, if I just stop being a, yeah. a jerk, yeah. <laughs> excuse the colorful language, I won't have to kill myself on the cross, yet he knew he was going to do it, he, he knew that it was a plan, and he did it anyway. That's the example of meditated, premeditated suicide. Yeah, yeah, it's willful negligence. Like yes, mm. yes, yeah, for sure yeah okay uh guys are we getting close to the end of the break data five what do you think um no we still got another good five minutes for the break all right i got a good comment from the plug who says 
uh, Christianity, this is a comment as a feedback to John Richards, is in fact a business. You can tell because they don't have a single package deal. It's always a subscription service. You can't just do a one-stop payment and be like, I'm done. I'm good for the rest of my life. You have to go to church. He says, it's literally called service. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. It, well, it's not a product. It's a yeah. service. <laughs> well, not only that, but the, the Bible tells you in 1 Peter 3.15 that you got to go out and spread the word. I mean, right. it's a, you got to do it. It's, yes. He's talking about things you have to do for the Bible. Yeah. Right, right. It's yeah. not a guy will do it for you. Well, what okay. I want is for the government mm -hmm. to recognize that it's a business and start taxing them. <laughs> oh. Yes, absolutely. We, yeah. They're all uh, parasites on the rest of society. We have to support them through our taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, good comment on that. There's private schools that are often filled with rich people who benefit other rich people because the schools get property taxes that go to that school. Whereas poor neighborhoods do not, poor neighborhoods are loaded with churches that don't pay property taxes. And yeah. so they are essentially a money sink for mm. education. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's worse in other countries, in countries like Nigeria, which desperately needs some welfare and mm. education in hospitals and the only rich people in there are the pastors you know right, right. Mm -hmm. sure yeah Layered. and uh don't forget that the vouchers for uh religious schools take directly take government money from regular schools public schools to yes. fund religious yes. schools yes. so and that's a that's a money sink from uh from our educational system and tithing so if you tax 10 percent of a poor community their paychecks that's money that goes literally nowhere it mm -hmm. goes back to feeling false hope dread pirate what do you got well i was going to say that uh, that happens a lot in canada uh that uh, a big portion of the public purse for education goes towards um religious uh, or schools with uh, uh uh, religious um, programming uh, like right. Christians and uh, Islam, Islamic schools. Um, and also, uh, now I can't remember what I was going to say, but I'll, I'll add on to that. I would say, uh, you know, the, the idea of cognitive dissonance or cognitive bias also is if you're a Christian, you think, well, my church is uh, contributing to the community. Is it, or is it contributing to only to other Christians? Right. right. Because you have a, a, a building that only, satisfies the needs of the people who go to it and meanwhile mm -hmm. everyone else that needs that property tax or that money or that funding or that support system don't get it unless they subscribe to your dogma mm -hmm. or they build another <clears throat> church down the street and right. suck more money from yeah the community well it's it's their particular needs it's it's an icon from medieval days to to, to the present you know mm -hmm. certain neighborhoods the nicest building is the church yeah. right. the money flows yeah. from the community to the church which builds yep you know, hoards the money or builds the church or whatever. Yeah. Well, and then when you go, when, when they need money, they come to you. But when you need money, they tell you to go to God. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, you yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's a great model. It's, it's a diode. Well, over here in the UK, we have laws against discrimination. So what I would like to see is those laws being extended to the usage of faith buildings so that mm. if on monday they have a christian meeting in their hall on tuesday they've got to have a muslim one <laughs> and on wednesday they've got to have a jewish one and that applies to all of the different religions or or secular ones they could open it yeah. as a, a, a community club yeah. Yeah. on certain days of the week yes yes Pay back well you know the, they, the they say about mcdonald's that mcdonald's is not in the business of selling hamburgers and fries they're in the real estate business <laughs> that's what that's what religions are when it comes to that thing they're not saving souls they're, they're selling they're collecting real estate that's it they're yep they're they're kick, they're making that money that's what well, we do uh, we don't sell franchises generally so yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah anyway are we getting closer to the bottom yep all sounds, right let's take that break. right okay uh this is digital free thought radio hour and wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tech uh, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. We were founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now, and we have over a thousand members. 
We also have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables over its pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meeting. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can also find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. That'll take you there. Just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to a meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Star Star one. Part one. Wombat, what are you going to pick up? Hey, we're going to go more into the cognitive dissonance well, but first let's check in with Boudreaux. Boudreaux, you know, not to pick on you with your uh, Catholic background, but did you ever have a favorite Catholic saint? The people want to know. Yes, the people want to know. And why is it St. Lucy? Okay, that was the question. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, you you thought I paid attention way more uh, when I was in Catholic school, uh, Catholic, uh, well, (laughs) Catholic school. Church service and then some right. Wednesday night Catholic uh, after school things. Uh, I, was, I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, we call it CCD. Uh, I forget what it stood for. But since I'm a good steward of the internet, um, I Google searched my favorite uh, saint, which is going to be Saint Agatha, okay. uh, because apparently she's the patron saint of breast cancer patients, uh, oh, martyrs, ra- rape victims, and others. So, so how is it a saint? Uh, with, they didn't even know about <laughs> breast cancer back then, did they? No, you no. can make new saints, right? <clears throat> like that's yeah. how it works with the Catholic okay. Church. You can just like make new ones. But well, yeah, there's one for breast cancer. That's good. Well, th- well this one apparently, um, Saint Agatha also invoked against earthquakes, natural disasters, and fires, which to me makes it sound like she's like a bad guy in a video game. So I'm going with Saint Agatha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now it's on the list. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Plug says, thank you. John Richards got a question for you. Um, you are a scientist. I would love to know why are there religious scientists? So here's the actual question. For real though, if there's any scientists who are religious, I'd like to know how they think the universe started and how that ties in with their beliefs. Why are there religious scientists in the first place? Mm, that's a question that's always puzzled well, me. Because... It's just, go ahead. If if you are a scientist, you are working day by day looking mm. for evidence. And there is no evidence for any God whatsoever that's come to my attention anyway. And we've been right. looking for two and a half thousand years or so. So longer than that. Yeah, indeed. So what happens when they is is there some sort of you know, you know at the airport you go through this arch and they they some sort of detection me- mechanism works out what you're carrying on you, whether you're smuggling, I don't know, guns through or whatever. Do they have one of those at the door to their scientific establishment so that once they've walked through that, they're cleaned of the need to seek evidence and they're oh, happy man. to... Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I would love that in the future to just be like, here's a here's a scanning device that just clears you of all unneeded dogma in your yes, brain and just it, frees you from like all these really bad ideas. You go through it and you're like, oh, maybe Ryan Seacrest is a pretty good host. Yes. You know, it's just like, you go through, <laughs> oh, this is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Because I, I think something like that must happen. They've got this double oh. personality uh, that, that, mm. in, on the one hand. when it Partitioning. Comes to- yeah, 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 compartmentalizing. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was what was it called? Um, n- non-overlapping um, magisteria. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens? They've got this compartment in their brain which works on Sundays when they're at church. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. <clears throat> from Mondays to Fridays, that one switched off, and the other one switched on. The rational one is switched right. on. It's. Just, I, I think it was uh, Stephen Jay Gould that came up with yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, well, himself it, being a scientist and all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a very interesting way to look at it. Yeah. When you're saying switching off parts of your brain, when you do like these talks with people, like Larry and Dread Pirate and I have done, uh, you can see it happen. You can see them talk. Hey, tell me why you think tectonic plates are a thing, and they'll tell you. They'll list off a number of criteria that are all very well substantiated, well researched. Mm-hmm. Not absolutely sure, 
but altogether make it such that they've met the the claim of why are there tech to play tonics and like very well evidence and then you say like so then if you have all this evidence for this why do you believe in a god and then switch well back when i was in third grade <laughs> i had a, a a sore stomach and i asked my mom to give me a prayer and, and it went away and not proved god exists to me mm -hmm. i'm just like right, right. whoa look at that look at that yeah. little yeah. fire yeah. switch yeah after five it looked like and you wanted to sleep. No, go for it dread well i was going to say about you know, talking about calibration because mm. that's what we often do in in uh, socratic examination is to calibrate uh confidence and beliefs yes. and uh you know sometimes like you were saying an example of the tectonic plates where you could have that conversation with someone and and then ask them well what is your confidence that that is in fact the case well you know 95 percent. that's kind of Correct. what the evidence is Correct. and then this thing about mom praying for you and carrying your stuff 100 percent, 100 percent. right how could i lower your confidence by one percent well you can't do nothing. it i'm 100 confident nothing. yeah, yeah so. it's a bizarre situation so you're closed-minded on it no i'm not closed-minded i'm just will never change my mind about it <laughs> 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 i'll hear things like that but listen um what you were saying before, John Richards, it was really interesting because you had this idea of scientists' jobs are finding evidence, and they haven't found evidence for God. The <clears> thing <throat> is, they found evidence for God. It's just not enough evidence to support a God claim. Uh, they have terrible antidotes. <clears throat> antidotes, my bad. Uh, don't 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 arrest me, John Richards. I'm sorry for pronouncing the C an antidote, but uh, uh, they have um, you know personal experience. They have mm -hmm. arguments from comfort. <clears throat> they have a uh, a book of claims that they believe are true. They mm -hmm. have arguments from authority. <clears throat> All of these things do not add up to any worthwhile belief or, yeah, yeah. or demonstration of a God existing. Yet they've reduced their criteria to, to yeah, yeah. a second standard where mm -hmm. they will use that to confirm that a God exists. Mm -hmm. Whereas for everything else, they have a completely different standard. Yeah. And so essentially they're operating on a double standard. Exactly. They found evidence, but they're willing to believe it on that low standard. What yeah, do you yeah. think? So they, so they leave their laboratory and then bar lowers right down to <laughs> ankle height. <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah, it's really frustrating. Hey, Dr. Yeah. Pratt, what's up? Oh, what gets me is when, when and I did this myself when I was a um, believer or getting close to non-belief, uh, you know, give me a sign. Mm. And anything that out of the ordinary that happens is, quote, a sign from God. And not only just a sign from God, but a sign from that particular God, which supports that particular religion. Mm. Uh, like I asked one guy, uh, I told him I was an atheist and he couldn't believe it. And I said, well, why do you believe it? What convinced you that God was real? He said, right. well, one day I, I uh, asked for a sign. And everything, every number I looked at had sevens in it. It was just all over the place. <laughs> my, my, my paycheck, you know, right. uh, everything, license plates. So that was good enough for him. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's a shame. It's just not a phone call. It's like, oh, I'm yeah. God. I, I exist by the way I exist. Yeah. That would be at least better than yeah. I found a sign in a clown. Going you know. by that reasoning, obviously, 007 <clears throat> is God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dread, what do you think? Go. Yeah. I was going to say that, uh, like in in for for pastafarians or for myself as a pastafarian, anyway, um, my uh, my my pastafarianism is is based on um, the idea that there are unknowable aspects to existence that I will never ever have a solution for, and it's it serves kind of like as an avatar or as um, a placeholder where I can celebrate those things um, without without conflict. You know what I mean? Sure. So sure. Uh, do I believe in a literal flying spaghetti monster? Well, probably not. But, you know, you, you think about quantum entanglement and string theory and and the, you know, the, the forms of matter inside a neutron star, which are related to forms of pasta. These are all really uh, just as good an explanation as any for right. those things that we'll never understand fully. And, I see possibilities. That's, where I, sort of that's like, where I place myself. Possifarianism is a uh, uh, avatar for a celebration of the unknown and complex. Yep. And, and exactly. it is a shrinking unknown because we are figuring things out, but it's so vast that it's like, Hey, we'll be here for a while. This unknown thing's going to be here, but let's just have some pasta and enjoy the fact that <clears throat> Absolutely. there's going to be some things we won't ever figure out. Isn't that cool though? Isn't that yeah, actually uh, interesting? I like that a lot as, as a, an approach to it. 
Uh, Boudreaux, I saw your hand. What's up? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that, how you um, uh, summarize that Pastafarianism, though. That's that's Thank a good... Uh, yeah. So um, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson did a... Um, I saw it on a YouTube video. I'm not sure if it was a lecture or what it was, but he, he basically... He, he turned the, the question, a lot of people look at uh, religiosity compared to uh, degrees, you know, in education. And there are, there are um, you know, X percentage of religious people with people with bachelor's degrees, let's say. And the, 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 the percentage kind of drops as you get to, you know, higher levels, levels of education. You get into master's right. and PhD right. and, and it drops even most significantly when you get into the real harder sciences, mm. um, you know, astrophysics and, and so on. And, and so, you know, people have said for, for years, you know, the, the more advanced degree, the more advanced scientist, uh, uh, again, in the hard science, nothing, nothing against the other scientists, but I think it stands to reason that there's different type of thinking that goes into some of these hard sciences and, Right. And those are the ones naturally would would um, reject a God. What Neil deGrasse Tyson did was he looked at the interesting piece is let's look at the actual religious people that have these advanced degrees. Those are the people worth talking to, studying, interviewing. You you will have this advanced degree and you're a huge minority in your field and it be, it because you still believe in a God. Those are the those are the interesting people. So I don't know if there's always been a follow up to it, but I'm I would be really curious too. And, and you probably see it, Ty, in your in your uh, uh, work and, and field. But yeah, oh, yeah. You, you're you're surrounded by, and I see it sometimes too. And on, yeah. on campus and in, in engineering, it's like, you know, the the it, it surprises me to see someone yeah. with a with PhD and advanced degree and still, Amazing. you know. Yeah. Right. Well, the most famous Oof. example of this, of course, is Francis Collins, who yes. uh, he, he was a um, key person in the Human Genome Project, wasn't he? But yep, and the um, priest. Yeah. He he was uh, he was a pure scientist. Not Collins, no. No. Go ahead. He was a pure scientist who had a revelation when he saw a frozen waterfall. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. That made him become a Christian. Yeah. So, wow. Really. You know, and convinced mm -hmm. him hundred percent. I can like show him a bunch sign. of frozen waterfalls right now. You can yeah. go on yeah. Google. Did he have Google mm -hmm. images back then? <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's an okay. idea, though. I think okay. we've now we've got Chat GPT. Oh yeah. yeah. We should ask yeah. it. We, sh we should ask it. Why are yes. there religious scientists? Ah, uh, yeah. Go. I can do this next meeting. We'll do uh, Chat GPT where we will generate fifty or ten questions for the yeah. show and see yeah. how. Yeah. Yeah. Ask 10 questions that will stump atheists. How about that? We'll ask chat GPT to Ooh. give that to us and see if we can field them. So that uh, this is a new chat box program or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's an AI. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's state of the art AI. It is a step. So uh, and we, and it's called what? Chat GPT? GPT? It's a step forward. So, uh yeah. quick sidebar. There's things called Turing tests, which is like a really fun. Yeah. They actually make a they actually make a competition where you can see on YouTube people competing against each other with robots that they produce mm. that are made to trick other people to, that they're actually people or a chat mm. robot. Mm. And we've, since 2012, have made uh, a, 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 a chat bot that can actually, more than 50% of the time, actually convince people that they're actually talking to an actual human being. Yeah. And companies have been buying those programs and use them for their like customer service operations. Mm -hmm. So like when you go on Amazon mm -hmm. and you think you're talking to a person, maybe from like India or somewhere, it's actually just a robot that's like yeah. using the fact yeah. that it's foreign to cover up some of the grammatical mistakes that it's making, yeah. but it's still just fixing stuff for you automatically. Oh, and yep. then finally, oh. they have an open AI, which is basically, <laughs> hey, anybody can use this. You can go on, it's it's partially owned by Google or at least sponsored by it, but they're $29 billion owned, uh, privately owned distribution of open software. You can go on chat GPT, oh log in and play around with this computer that will write song lyrics for you, poetry mm -hmm. on very, very short prompts. My friend from work said, write a poem about our job, posted it. And we got like this mm -hmm. epic odyssey of like yeah. everyone about our job, the nature of the work that we do. And it's all in lyrical sense. I'm like, yeah. this is scary. Yeah. This is actually very, yeah, well it's very scary. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> uh, how you'd feel if you're a writer for shows yeah, yeah. that the, the, they could hmm. just take over. I'm going to get some new well, so We need better Paris. writers for shows. Most shows are, yeah. are really bad. There's only like yeah. one or two good shows. That, right, I, I right. Know. We all know that.
Right. Um, Dred, I was going to tell you that uh, most of these these chat GPT interactions are all text based. When you go there, you have to type in and they give it back right. in, di- in text. However, if you go to YouTube, you can find a lot of uh, videos where they have taken the text and run it through an emulator yes. uh, of a person, you know, who's mm-hmm. talking the lines and doing right. the speech instead of so you don't have to read all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And okay. they also have videos where they have one GPT or one AI talking to another that way. Mm-hmm. So right. the conversation is yeah, very yeah. interesting. It's What's really funny is there's there's a cool point where some of those videos, the two robots are talking to each other mm-hmm. and the other robots like, are you a chat bot? And the other one's like, yeah, are you a chat bot? It's like, oh, we're both chat bots. <laughs> I was just like, this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, is getting, yeah. it is getting really scary. We It started mm-hmm. back in the Victorian times when they had things called automatons where mm. the, the little manicule men figures like uh, robots, but hidden inside was a tiny right. little man who operated them. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answered all their mm-hmm. questions. But then, you of know, course, more recently, we've had the Deepak Chopra quote yes. generator. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and the, the chat, yeah. chat GPT seems to be the grown-up version of that. But it mm-hmm. is a, amazing, and I'm sure it would pass the Turing test. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, in that, they they have given it some exams it's done some exams and it's passed not right not top of the class it's, but it's got mm. middling results middling grades in i forget which subject areas but they but, can create exams too you right. can ask it yeah. to create a, a homework assignment yeah yeah but sure. let me throw this out as well there's high school teams now that can mm. design chat bots that can break the Turing test or get through it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's only through iterative studies of people working together and mm. not praying or relying on a God to fix it, but using skills in software engineering and human mm. understanding to improve and teach better generate teach generations more mm. adequately so they mm. can more effectively meet these like bars. Yeah, yeah. We I are wanna... so excited in science because we're constantly coming up with new things. And yeah. this is an example of a new thing brought about through the scientific method. Mm. Whereas religion is still hashing out the same 40 or six stories, 46 yeah. stories, you know, every, yeah. every, you know, 52 stories, I'm sorry, or mm-hmm. some, sometimes they reuse them. We all know that pastors don't always have a new story to tell, but it's the same yearly worth of stories every single time it's <laughs> dyad. And it's, and hopefully as, as a, as a commu- global community, we are understanding that and moving away from religiosity and moving towards this new, exciting stuff that science keeps coming out with. Cause we need more people to contribute to that. More women, females, born people, everyone, everyone doing it improves it because that's the way how we get better at stuff with just all these new hands and minds working together on these new projects i feel like that is the stuff while scary in some aspects all new technology was scary i mean i remember when we first got our first microwave that was terrifying we're like what in the world it's not even hot and it's making it hot what's going on and it wasn't called a microwave it was called a radar range (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah but remember how scary it was when you got like hd cameras for the first time you're like wait a second that's what people see when they see me i don't like this we always have these big swings but in the end it always tends to improve because we make the quality of life better i feel like stuff like this could really improve a lot of things so yay science and uh go on ahead Boudreau. Go, go on. just real quick to, to tap on what you're saying yeah remember there was a time well i don't remember it but uh, people wouldn't get into an elevator unless it had an elevator operator. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember. That. I don't remember that, but I do. I am aware of that. Yes, yeah. yeah. I John, miss what's those. up? I miss. Them. <laughs> <laughs> they, John, they, what's just, up? they just stood there and said things like "ladies' underwear." Yes, <laughs> men's wear for four. <laughs> yeah. So I, I wanted to say that the I want to plug because yesterday. I had this fantastic guest on Free Thought Hour, a very brilliant philosopher type, who we, we started to talk about the, the developments in AI. And he, his opinion is, and I tend to agree with him, that the Turing test is too linguistic because it would eliminate our own infants as being conscious just because they can't speak yet. <clears throat> You know, and there's a, another aspect there too about uh, AI is that you never hear one say, you know, I was thinking. <laughs> you know you mean, mean they don't use like dot, superlatives? Dot, dot. It doesn't say, well, I had this idea. 
like it, I, AIs don't come up with original ideas, right? So there you go. Next question for chat GPT. Have you ever had an idea? Have you ever okay. had an original idea? Yeah, yeah, we may have to define original because they can definitely come up with things that are essentially novel just through brute force, right? In the same way that a human being can come up with a new song. They can come up with like a new poem. Yeah, yeah but, do it. you know, they, they wouldn't be able to sit there and say, well, I was thinking about the nature of time <laughs> and I developed this uh, new theory about uh, space and uh, the space time continuum or something like that. I mean, that's not going to happen. Oh, you that's uh, classic final that. last words no. by Dread Pirate mm -hmm. Hicks. Listen, no. I can tell you, no, not there's... chat GPT, but there's another AI program that I'd like for you guys to check out after this, where it's essentially a prompt and it will make art for you. Oh, and right. it'll make I started art. to say. Go yeah, ahead, Dread. Or go ahead, Dad. Uh, they, they already create new songs that yeah. didn't Music exist. Videos. The art that, that didn't yeah. exist. Stories that didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're... Uh, they're you know you're saying they don't say that i'm thinking because right. that's all they do <laughs> but like, they think uh, they don't do anything else but think pretty much just want to put something here hopefully so like we have this idea of what thinking is that humans do and we have it yeah. on some of the pedestal but it's actually a fairly mathematical process that can mm -hmm. be yeah. processed and emulated very well to where the things where it's like it could be so efficient that you don't have to think or express it as, well, I was thinking of a new yeah. plant. It's like, no, here's 40 new plants that I just came up with. It's, like, these are all awesome. I'm, yeah, I'm coming with a billion of them it, every millisecond. It's processing, comparison, plants. comparing right. and producing, which is all things that computers yeah. do well. Yeah, yes, like a neural exactly. network and that's, and that's mapped kind of off the, the way how we think anyway. Yeah, 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 that was the point I was going to make is like, you know, all these chat boxes rely on prompts to do the things oh. that they do. Yeah. What would be really interesting is if you woke up one morning and there was this new piece of work that had not been prompted in any way, shape, or form, and then that being the responsibility of an AI. Oh, well, well Boudreaux would argue with that. That's not even free will. Because <laughs> none yeah, of our thoughts are, yeah. are well, spontaneous yeah. in a weird way. Anyway. Well, when you th and you think about all the, uh, the art the original creations of, like on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they were prompted by the church. You know, they told right. Michelangelo, paint yeah. this, paint that. These are the scenes we want. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are original uh, compositions, but he did them, you know, after being mm -hmm. prompted. True enough, true enough. Fuji, what do you got? So your, your free will comment always always sparks ideas for me. Of course. I, it'd be really interesting to, to uh, quiz a chat bot to say, <laughs> come up, give me a random movie. Um, and and they could very easily tap into a movie database and pick a movie at random. Don't right. you think mm -hmm. that it would be pretty obvious if you if you asked for, you know, 10 random movies from from us, from humans, uh, even us on the call versus a chat bot, wouldn't you get a very different um, sampling of movies? Yeah. I mean, I would, I think would argue that. Yeah, I'd argue the yeah. chapter would be even more random than mine because mine would just well, be like definitely would be more random. But <laughs> our our picks, our picks, because of our lack of free will, I think right. would be they they would they would all kind of like tie to they would be recent movies or they would be really popular movies or they would Marvel be Marvel movies. Yep, Marvel ones that really I, appeal to you. Yeah, yeah right. I am not gonna I am not gonna suggest a movie I've never heard of. Right, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't. But that one, that one, but the chatbot might. So I bet if you did a. <laughs> some kind of a, a, a distribution of like the popularity uh, or the, the star rating or, or whatever, uh, or the gross uh, uh, income, the gross, whatever uh, the, the movie collected. I guarantee that the, the chat bot would have a much lower mm. uh, score on popularity right. or whatever versus. So there, there's your Turing test right there. Just right. ask, ask them for a random movie. I mean, it Box used to be the case where people, that you were uh, to, case people would say you can never beat a human being with at chess because chess is this, you know, really abstract sort of conversation between two very brilliant forward thinkers who can like plan things ahead. It's like, no, like there's a, there's a way to meticulously design objectives in chess to where you can say, I think these moves are better and I'm going to just try to make the best move each time. And now we have computers on my phone that can beat me or grandmasters, right? And that's really useful because mm. it can train grandmasters. So like it didn't ruin chess. It just made people better at chess players because now there's a higher standard. I feel like chatbot and like these art programs are just going to do the same thing. They'll inspire more things from people, but they'll also make people understand that the way how we understand things can be understood. And that is a very useful 
thing because now we don't rely on mysticism or religion or spiritualism to explain that to us. Now we know the process and we can now find the best process to educate children and train ourselves at new cool things that we want to learn. Like this is a benefit if we just understand that everything we do in here can be fairly well understood and if anything, done better. And I think that's a cool thing. John Richards, I think you had a comment. Yeah, well, it's, you've moved on. <laughs> but uh, ah, sorry, sorry, buddy. It's about these illustrator programs because a friend of mine is a drummer in a heavy metal band, and he uses it to design their album covers. And it, it's Ooh. so fascinating how how many you, you put in a few prompts and like you know I, I don't know a devil's fork or something, and and it comes up with forty different examples in oh, three seconds cool. and he spends hours through into the early morning <laughs> trying to decide which one of these wonderful designs is the best right right i'll I'll also throw one last thing out before we close the show i enjoy drawing and the fact that there's a computer that can make art doesn't take away the value that i put into the practice of drawing in the same way that there are people who love writing and the yeah. fact that there's a program that can write poems too doesn't take away any yeah. joy that that person can get from it. Yeah, I just think we are going to evolve to where we appreciate the things that we love to do more versus doing them to necessarily gain or profit or a notoriety or an audience or things, things like that. When we have robots capable of doing routine tasks for us and that expansion of routine expands, then more people will have more time to enjoy the things that they love to do because we have the basic needs being met through automation. And I think yeah. that is generally a really good goal, the improvement of society through letting robots do what they want to do. And then it's a question of what can we do to make the robots enjoy what they're doing <laughs> before the robot wars start. <laughs> All right, guys, Dread Pirate, where can Pirate. I find your stuff at? You can find me uh, on YouTube at Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. Nice live stream this at uh, 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings and later do the views on the news at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings, PST. Dread Pirate, one little last note. I would say you should always plug your show as P-Y-R-A-T-E, <laughs> right? It's right there for Great. you. Boudreau, <laughs> something that you'd recommend we check out before next week. Oh, what would I recommend? Um, I was going to recommend to the AI um, people to um, uh, to uh, program their bots to sort movies by box office results and then randomly select from there. So and then then we, we now they can pass the Turing test. So I think we we solved that problem. So very cool. My my random little thing is they make uh, vacuum robots now that have little AIs guys mm -hmm. in them that will now instead of just smearing dog poop all over your carpet, like look at it and be like, hey, I think that's dog poop. It's a amorphous shape. I'm going to put that into my category catalog and use my neural wow. network to recognize whatever things are in your home. Wow. You could get that. You could not get that. I just don't have a dog. It saved me. Get a cat with a litter box. You'll solve yourself a lot of problems. John <laughs> Richards, what's up? Well, does it come out with a little dustpan and brush and scoop up? The dog? <laughs> like the Jetsons, right? Yeah. Yes. It yeah. vaporizes it. Vaporizes. <laughs> it has la my, my robot has lasers on it. It's kind of interesting. John. Yeah. Free Thought Channel. That's where to go. Nice. And I, I strongly recommend this for Free Thought Hour chat I had yesterday with Alan Colcoon. And yes, boy, uh, views on the news later on today. And the sad news is that one of our panelists, Frank Lovell, is no longer mm. with us. Mm. He's with the noodly one. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to hear. Better five. Anything you'd like to close out the show with? Uh, well, yeah. Um, we were getting back to the subject originally was uh, cognitive dissonance and irrational dichotomies of thought. Uh, I on my website, digitalfreethought.com, if you click on the blog button, uh, I have a, an article there called Irrational Dichotomies of Religious Thought. And I recommend uh, if you'd like to know more about that to go there and, and read that. Um, what else? My, I have a book on atheism that's available on uh, Amazon. Thank you, Dred, for holding it up. I appreciate that. Uh, it's called Atheism, What's It All About? And uh, I take the articles from my website and put them in the book. So it's a book of articles about the subject of atheism. Uh, my YouTube handle is at Doubter5. I have a lot of 
content on there as well as animated. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Later.